This meeting is being recorded. Good morning or good evening, everyone. We are happy to welcome you to today's MAI webinar, How to Be a Successful Self-Published Author with Pastor Kevin Wayne Johnson. Warm greetings to you all. It is exciting to see 54 global friends sign up for this webinar. Welcome, my name is Ramon Rocha, broadcasting from the MAI office in Carl Stream, Illinois. We have both the Q&A and the chat windows available for your questions, so feel free to use either of them. We'll entertain questions towards the end of our session. Um, Pastor, please move the slides one. As you know, if you are a writer, you can get published either via the traditional way, meaning through a publishing house, or you can publish your manuscript yourself. But self-publishing is not easy. It's a lot of work. So how do you do it? How do you self-publish successfully? Our speaker this morning has experienced both being traditionally published and has self-published as well. And in both cases, God has blessed him. So he has a wealth of experience to share with us. Pastor Kevin Wayne Johnson is the founder and CEO of the Johnson Leadership Group. He is a best-selling author of eight books and contributing author to five additional books on the topics of faith, blended families, finance, and global book marketing. His books have earned some 19 literary awards. So please welcome Pastor Kevin Wayne Johnson. Thank you so much, Ramon, uh, for the wonderful opportunity to be with you this morning. And uh, good morning and good afternoon and good evening to all of my colleagues and friends around the world. Uh, thank you all so much for taking the time out today to listen to what I have to say and teach, uh, help you to learn and grow and develop and um, improve your craft as a writer and as an author and to get that message that God has given you uh, to the masses that are there in your local area, in your regional area, across your country, and even the uttermost parts of the world. Uh, I've been at this now for 17 years. Uh, I absolutely love it. That's why uh, when I teach and when I have an opportunity to talk about writing, I, I always do it with a big smile because it's been a, a tremendous blessing as I have an opportunity to draw closer to the Lord and, and just learn as I go forward. Uh, Ramon is right. Self-publishing is not easy, but it's definitely doable. And for the next several minutes, I will share with all of you some of the strategies and principles and techniques that I have learned over the years. Uh, sometimes I had a mentor and coach to help, and other times I just learned from mistakes that I made. Uh, but when it's all said and done, if you have a book that's in you, and obviously you do, then learning how to navigate that road and understanding the publishing industry uh, is what will help us to be successful in our self-published um, adventures. I'll start out by saying this. One of the primary reasons that I am a huge fan of being a self-published author is because as a self-published author, you retain all of the rights and you retain all of the ownership. And as we have a conversation about marketing and have to be successful as a self-published author, uh, we're also going to teach you how to maximize your sales. And as you maximize your sales, 100% of those revenues come back to you because you are the owner of your intellectual property uh, through your copyright and also through your ISBN, your International Standard business number. So that, that's the benefit. The only downside to self-publishing, and, and I'll share this with you, the only downside to self-publishing is that all of the responsibility falls on you to publicize, promote, and market your book. Now, that's not a bad thing, but part of what we'll cover today is to help you 
to uh, not waste money and not waste time by using strategies and principles that work. Okay, so on that note, let's just move forward. So this diagram is one of my favorite diagrams that I teach. And uh, I've been teaching at writers' conferences now for about 13 of the 17 years that I've been writing. Uh, different conferences have brought me on board and publishing executives have asked me to teach. And I've actually joined the faculty for a number of these organizations to teach authors. And this is my favorite slide because there in the very center, in the middle of that circle right there in the middle is, is your book. Now, if you have multiple books on your mind, then you could add an S to the word books and it would be your books. But for every book that you write, whether you're self-published or if you're fortunate enough to sign a contract with a traditional publisher, uh, you have to have a roadmap to get your book in the hands of your customer. And your, your customer is your reader. And so delivering great customer service to your readers is very, very important and developing a platform so that your readers get to know you personally through your in-person appearances, through your social media, uh, through your podcast, through your radio show or TV show. And we'll talk about that a little bit more as we go along. Uh, you have to create a roadmap and you also have to think big. And when I asked a question to most authors or aspiring authors, you know, I asked the question, what is the, the, the ideal place to sell your book? Most people respond and they say the bookstore, because that's a, that's a natural answer. But the fact of the matter is only about 30% of, of all books are actually sold in bookstores. So that means there's a market uh, for 70% uh, of your book sales in, in different areas. So to my left, I have, I have shared with you a number of different venues where you can sell uh, your book once it's published. And even before your book is published, part of your marketing strategy is to reach out to these different venues and, and give them advance notice that you have a new book that will enter into the marketplace at a particular time. So for example, we're now in the month of December. Um, I will be transitioning my Give God the Glory book series uh, into audiobooks starting in January. And I will start to pin a new series of books on leadership because that's where I am right now in my life, teaching others about leadership. I'll be writing five books on leadership and I want my first book to be released in the early fall of 2019. So in September of 2019, uh, my, my book on leadership will enter into the religious and the general marketplace. And so this month, December, is the time for me to start to get the word out that in nine months, this book will, will, will be available for, for buyers. And so on your left, you'll see libraries. Libraries are very interested in acquiring your books. Conferences, there's all types of conferences, depending on your genre and your topic. There's an audience out there that attends local, regional, national, and even international conferences throughout the year on a regular basis in your town, in your country, uh, that they, they want to know that you exist and they want to get their hands on your book so that they can make it available to their conferees. Uh, the prison system, um, men and women who are incarcerated, there is a distribution channel that can get access to your book and have it distributed into the prisons because prisoners, men and women, read while they're incarcerated and there is a market there. The military, uh, depending on the military presence in your country, I know here in the United States of America, we have five major branches of the military and there are military bases all over the country, all over the world, and they have a desire to get access to your books because our military men and women who are serving have families. 
Uh, they have husbands, they have wives, they have children, and they have a desire to get access to your book. And there's a separate distribution channel that's available to get your books into the military bases. Bookstores, we've already mentioned. Uh, you, have, you have small bookstores, you have large bookstores, you have bookstore chains, uh, you have Christian bookstores, you have general market bookstores. There, there's, a, there's a lot of different bookstores that you can choose from and have relationships with. Many of them have different modes of distribution to get your books into the bookstores. But in some cases, uh, local bookstores in your neighborhood, you can just develop a good relationship with the bookstore manager or owner, uh, and they will be more than happy to accommodate you. Colleges and universities all have bookstores on their campus, and they, they want and need access to your books, not just textbooks that have a curriculum for the classes that the students are taking, but our students also uh, like to read for leisure and they like to read for education. So if you're a fiction book writer or if you're a nonfiction book writer, perhaps there's a market there for you across the colleges and universities. And then of course, churches, many, many churches, not all, but many churches have their own bookstore um, under their roof and they have opportunities to get access to your book to carry that for their congregation. Now over on your right-hand side, there's also another list uh, of areas for your roadmap. You have trade shows. You have a number of book fairs. There's book fairs going on all the time across the world. The government, so you have a local government and you have a state government and you have a national government in your country, just like we do here in the United States of America. Uh, and there's, there's opportunities for you as an author to make your book available through these government agencies. Mail order, that's direct mail to customers, book clubs. There's thousands and thousands of book clubs that focus on your particular topic and they're always looking to have a, a guest author of the month at their monthly meetings and also making your books available to their book club. And some of these book clubs have members of five people and some of the book clubs have members of upwards of 100 people. And if you, have, if you write a really good book and they really like it, uh, the word will go out and they'll, they'll market it for you for free because they just enjoy it and they'll recommend it to their family and friends. And then last but certainly not least, and this is not all inclusive, but these are the major areas, uh, book signings. So book signings are an opportunity for you to meet face to face with your customers, with your readers, and they love to meet authors and we have a really, really good time. So this is your roadmap. Please hang on to this. This is probably the most important slide. And I start out first because I want all authors to think outside of the box. We don't just sell our books in the bookstore, but we sell our books through a number of different venues. Now, here are some things that I would like for you to think about from some men and women who made some very significant accomplishments in their life. So Henry Ford created the Ford automobile many, many years ago. And, and one of his great quotes was, one of the greatest discoveries a man makes, one of his great surprises is to find that he can do what he was afraid he couldn't do. And as an author, oftentimes we hesitate to get behind the computer or to bring out our notepad and begin the journey of writing because we're, we're afraid, we're, we're a little timid, we're not quite sure what to do, we don't wanna make mistakes. But I would encourage you as an aspiring author, as a seasoned author, to go ahead and get started. If you're writing fiction or if you're writing nonfiction, you know, whatever that genre might be, just go ahead and get started because once you get started, it'll get you closer and closer to finishing. Now, R.C. Sproul had a very famous quote and it says, have a narrow focus primarily to write truth. And I underlined the word truth. The great crisis in Christian publishing is at that level. So we need writers who are more interested in communicating truth than they are in entertaining people. That's our charge. Uh, and as a self-published author, remember you are competing against other authors who are under contract with major publishing houses. So they might get more visibility, they might have more money behind their marketing, 
uh, and they have a powerful publishing company behind them. But, but trust me, by the end of this particular session, you'll come to see that those of us who are self-published authors and have been doing it for a while, again, I've been doing it for 17 years, we can sell as many, if not more, uh, books, ebooks, and audiobooks uh, than those that are actually signed to a contract. It just depends on which path you, you have a desire to take. Just two more quotes, and then we'll dive into uh, some really, really good meat for you. Um, Pat Riley uh, was a very, very successful professional basketball coach here in the United States uh, many, many years ago. And one of his quotes is, is really appropriate for those of us as authors. So excellence is the gradual result of always striving to do better. So the, the lesson here is if you've already published your book or you're on your way to publishing your book, once the book is published and it's out there in the marketplace, don't think that you have arrived. Just go ahead and continue to pursue excellence because I am a much better writer today than I was when I first started 17 years ago because I'm always looking for ways to improve my craft. And so it is with each and every one of us. We're always looking for ways to get better. And Dan Tanner at the bottom says, keep up the writing. This is perhaps one of the most important ministries today. We don't realize the influence we have on people's lives. It's difficult to comprehend what we do since our congregation is virtually invisible. You're going to reach hundreds, and thousands, perhaps millions of people that you may never know and that you never have any communication with. But as long as you continue to strive toward excellence, and as long as you continue to realize that the, you're having a great influence on people's lives because you're following through with the message that God has given you, then you are doing a great work. And, and being a self-published author uh, is really a good way to go and, and let's, let's get into some of these reasons why. Now, here are a couple of scriptures that guide us. This is Paul uh, teaching, first of all, to the saints at Colossae, and then the same Paul teaching to the saints at Ephesus. And, and what he's encouraging us to do is to always walk worthy of the vocation wherewith you were called. And writing and being an author literally is a vocation. It, it literally is. You, you, this is your vocation. And, and you are focused on your message and your content. You're focused on the audience that you're looking to reach. And if you'll be guided by these scriptures, it will help you uh, when it gets lonely and when it gets a little difficult. Uh, it'll, you re, you'll just be reminded that you have to do all that you're doing because you're doing it for the Lord, but equally important, he's given you an audience for you to reach. And so remember these two scriptures from Paul, again, to the saints in Colossae and to the saints in Ephesians, because this is a vocation, and we're being charged to walk worthy of the vocation wherewith you are called. One of the reasons why I'm still continuing to do this, and it's been 17 years, is because I love it. And I recognize that it is a vocation that God has called me to. And it's one of the many different ministry work that I'm currently involved with, in addition to being a pastor, uh, in addition to singing uh, and, and being a teacher and a trainer. Uh, it all kind of goes hand in hand with the vocation wherewith you are called. Um, and, and one of these days, you'll be on this side of the webinar and you'll be teaching other authors around the world as well, because it all starts locally, and, and then God will gradually expand your territory, okay? Now, let's go into the three phases. These are the three phases that I have defined many, many years ago uh, of being a self-published author. Uh, there are three different phases, and I'm gonna walk you through them all, and then I will answer your questions at the end. But what you'll come to find is phase one is all about the fact-finding, developing your strategy, 
and your pre-planning. Now, I've kind of already communicated a bit of that a little bit earlier. Um, my leadership series begins with book number one. There will be five books in the series. So book number one, I'm planning to be released to the Christian marketplace and the general marketplace in September of 2019. So now is the time in the month of December for me to start to get the word out to the media, to the publishing industry, through social media, through press release, and to all of my potential buyers who have supported my previous uh, book writings in a number of different areas over the years. Because with that much advance notice, people can begin to purchase the book even before it hits the marketplace. So phase one has to do with making sure you understand the differentiation between fiction and nonfiction. And, and we'll go through that in just a minute. Recognizing the importance of your book cover. Your book cover is very, very important. And in just a minute, I will show you a great sample of a good book cover that has done well because your book cover is judged throughout the entire publishing industry chain. People make decisions, both buyers and bookstore managers make decisions about whether your book will be received into their hands based upon the, the attractiveness of the book cover. Uh, how to go about registering your book, I'll, I'll share that with you. The importance of editing and proofreading. Uh, I'm a huge advocate of, of not editing your own work and not trying to proofread your own work. Hire a good professional editor that knows what they're doing and has been with it for a while. Typesetting and formatting, that's simply the outline of how your individual pages on your book will look. Some of us prefer to have our page numbers in the center, some prefer left and right. Some prefer different spacing, some prefer different font size. It, it all depends, but what we'll share with you what the industry standard is, and I would suggest that you stick with the industry standard. Uh, printing options, uh, you have literally hundreds of different choices for uh, the different types of page and color that you would like to use in your book. Uh, marketing, promoting, and sales, maximizing sales, all of this begins during phase one. Again, fact-finding, strategy, and pre-planning. And then making a decision, and this is very important, making a decision whether you want to work with a major publisher or not. If you want to be a self-published author, then you move forward and you, you, you develop your own copyright. You register your book in your name or in the name of your company uh, and your ISBN, your International Standard Book Number. Uh, you register that in your name or in the name of your business or uh, you start to work with a major publisher, but you make a decision here whether or not you want to move forward with self-publishing or take the time to develop a really good professional book proposal that would be submitted to a major publisher generally through a literary agent. Okay, so this is phase one. Now, phase one continues. This is how we di differentiate between fiction and nonfiction. So if you are a fiction writer, one who has an expertise in developing stories, a storyline where you create characters and you have the ability to create a plot and storylines that capture the reader from page one all the way through the end of the book, then you're going to build upon what we call the five senses. So you're gonna build your fiction writing, your book, upon sight, hearing, smell, touch, and taste. Because those are the five senses that you have to touch from page one to the end as you develop your characters and your storyline and your plot and, and then your, your gifted ability to build upon those senses. If you're like me, a nonfiction writer, because the way that God created me is I just have a thirst and a hungry for knowledge and for information and for education. Uh, I'm a learner and I always like to be in the company of people who are teaching me 
new and exciting things, getting me to think outside of the box, getting me to see things through a different lens. That's what really keeps me going as a man of God. So I'm a nonfiction writer. And nonfiction re requires uh, a great deal of research, study, uh, developing a really good outline, having great organizational skills. And in this case, in lieu of building upon the five senses, we're now featuring what we call the five W's, the who, what, when, where, and why. Because we are educating people. In, in my book series, Give God the Glory, uh, there were eight books in the series, but each one had a slightly different subtitle because I was interested, uh, based upon my research and my study, and, and being able to answer the who, what, when, why, and where, uh, I would dive into such areas as relationships and family and workplace and the church to help people better understand what it means to give God the glory in those different venues. So instead of writing a story or a fiction book, uh, I ended up with nonfiction. And then even in the other books where I'm a contributing author in the areas of faith and finance and blended families and book marketing, it's all about educating the audience, educating my readers, uh, enha enhancing their knowledge, giving them information that they may not have had. So that's the type of writer that I am. And so for you, this helps you to differentiate between fiction and nonfiction as you go forward. And, and it's very, very important. Now, I'll give you one tip. As a nonfiction writer, you have opportunities here and there as you develop your chapters to perhaps add some fiction as a part of your nonfiction book but the predominant content in your book will be nonfiction. Now, as a self-published author, I mentioned this a little bit earlier, but uh, there's a lot of focus on your book cover. Uh, when you have an opportunity, I would encourage you to go into your local bookstore and take a look at the shelves of the books that are listed and considered as bestsellers and take a look at the front cover and take a look at the back cover and, and, and even peruse the inside of the books to get a flavor of what the book cover looks like and why they may have come up with that design. And also to take a look at the inside of the book as well to give you an idea of what the author and the publisher were thinking. Because when it's all said and done, your book cover really needs to capture the eye of, of the buyer. The, the person that's going to ultimately purchase your book. Uh, and that person usually makes a decision within about seven seconds. They, they, they will take a look at your book cover, and if they like the book cover, then they'll turn it over to the back, and they'll read the back cover to see if they're interested, and then turning it back over and flipping through the pages to see if it's attractive, if it's appealing, and if it meets their eye. And if the answer is yes, they'll make the purchase. But if the answer is no, more than likely, it'll go back up on the shelf. So the truth of the matter is, it's a very, very competitive business. The reason that Ramon said that it can be difficult to be a self-published author during the opening has more to do with the fact that we are competing against authors that probably have a bigger name and a bigger platform. And they're also, they also have the advantage of the marketing dollars that are with the publishing company that has published them. But one of the, one of the key ways that we can compete is through a very attractive and a very appealing book cover that's very, very important. So hire a really good graphic artist, a graphic designer who understands the mechanics and the principles to put together a, a great book cover, uh, have that person on your side and on your team, and that will make a big difference. Um, now, I mentioned earlier that you are now the owner and the principal and the primary person that will be responsible for managing this process from A to Z. And as you sell books, 
100% of those revenues come back to you because you're, you are the owner of record. So your ISBN, ISBN stands for International Standard Book Number. Uh, you can just simply go to ISBN.org to purchase those. Uh, they're usually available in blocks of 10 which I think is a good thing because if you buy block of 10, then that means now you're on the hook to, to write five, uh, five or 10 books. So that, that's a good thing. Um, there's also an organization called R.R. Bowker, uh, sort of like a publishing data house, if you would. You can go there and get information on, on what's going on across the industry. Uh, your barcode that goes on the back of your book that's the barcode that the bookstores uh, and other retailers will scan so that they can uh, get credit, if you would, for purchasing your book and the pricing would come up automatically. Uh, LOC.gov. LOC stands for Library of Congress.gov. You can go there and, and purchase your barcode. Uh, the last time I checked, it cost $25 and they'll email it directly to you as a PDF file. And you can send that to your graphic designer and they can copy and paste that on the back of your book. Uh, your copyright. So in anything that you write in the form of a book or an article or any other publication is your intellectual property, your intellectual capital, if you would. It belongs to you and so you want to protect it. So you want to copyright your work. And you can do that, again, at loc.gov, that's libraryofcongress.gov. Last time I checked, it was a fee of $45. You can do it online, or you can do it by paper. The price may have changed, but uh, you could do either way. And it's right here uh, in the United States, uh, in Washington, D.C., our nation's capital. But uh, when you go there, you register your, your book in your name or in the name of your business and that that book belongs to you that that's your intellectual capital that goes into the book and then last but not least i mentioned on the opening slide uh, our libraries our libraries are a great venue to purchase your books it can be very very lucrative to get your books into the library system not only for checkout or rent but also for them to purchase as well and so lccn that stands for the library catalog card catalog network and you can register there and I believe they will assign you a nine digit number uh, LCCN uh, that goes onto the copyright page in your book and you can sign up to get that at loc.gov as well. So those are your five registration points as a self-published author and again as you generate sales for your books all of those revenues come back to you whether it's Amazon.com or one of the local or regional or national uh, bookstores. Uh, any, anytime you register your book on any of the online bookstores, there's a lot of those as well. Those revenues come back to you and you don't have to share any of those proceeds with a major publisher. Now here's an example of a book cover this is my workbook that I released back in 2013. This is part of the Give God the Glory series. So this one is subtitled Call to be Light in the Workplace, and it's a workbook. So it's intended for different groups in the workplace, their places of employment, to get together and have an opportunity to better understand what it means to give God the glory while they're at work. So my vision for my graphic artist was to capture the essence of the book on the cover so that before anyone even opens up the book, they'll understand what the book was all about. So it was very, very important for me to have a diverse group of individuals on the cover uh, because I wanted people to be representative of everyone uh, on the planet, whether it's the Pacific Rim or, or China or Russia or North America or Africa, uh, New Zealand, Australia, the Caribbean, uh, uh, Europe, I wanted everyone to be represented. And ideally, uh, you'll see here that there's a copy of the Bible. There's also a copy of notebooks and there's pens and pads. And there's a diverse group of men and women that are getting together in the workplace and they're all studying together. That's the purpose. And so this book cover 
gets people's attention before they even open it up. And, and, that's, and that's the key. So I was able to hire a good graphic artist to make the vision come to life. Uh, I had no doubt that people know that they are in the workplace. There's a sales chart behind them in the background, behind the gentleman with the dark jacket on. Uh, and they seem to be having fun together. They're, they're collaborating, they're together, uh, they're handling their business, and they also have the Bible that's open there and they're taking notes as well. This is, this is how you get the attention of people in the publishing chain, as well as your readers who are interested uh, in buying your product. Because again, you're competing against so many other books for limited spell, uh, shelf space in the bookstores. Now we're just about ready to conclude phase one. And just before I move into phase two, I wanted to share this with you as well. Again, do not edit your own work. Uh, you and I as authors, we're much too close to our work to be able to successfully edit. So don't, don't try to do that because it, it won't work, we'll, we'll miss things. Typesetting and formatting has to do with the layout of your book, um, how it looks to the reader. Uh, again, what's your font size? Uh, what, what color paper are you using? Uh, how heavy is the weight of the paper that you're using? Uh, are your numbers on your pages in the center, bottom, top, left, or right? It, it makes a difference to the eye of the reader. And so it's very important that you hire a good person who understands how to typeset and format. And then last but not least, uh, you have a number of different printing options and formats as a self-published author. You, you have your standard printing, which is typically the type of book that you and I have in our hand, the, the books that are available at the bookstore when we go to, to the shelves in the bookstore and, and we pick out, pick out a book that we're interested in, that would be your standard printing. We also have print on demand. Print on demand has been very, very popular now for a number of years. Um, I use Lightning Source. I have for quite a while. They have global distribution. As a matter of fact, they have 12 strategic distribution partners around the world. And I think it's a really, really good source. And I've been with them now for probably about 10 years. If I go to an event as a keynote speaker and I get permission to bring books to sell after I speak, and it's an audience of 250 people, then print on demand gives me the option to just print maybe 100 copies because perhaps I'll sell books to 50% of the audience. And the books will usually come to me directly from the printer within about one week. And uh, I'll take those books with me to my event. I, I only needed 100 books. I ordered 100 books. And hopefully I'll be able to sell those 100 books. And because I'm self-published, all of the revenue comes back to me. And then, and then eBooks. So whether it's a Kindle book on amazon.com or a number of the different venues and distribution channels that we have, the E stands for electronic. So uh, ideally the graphic designer, when they give you the ultimate manuscript and it's all said and done and you're ready to go to print, you'll also have a format where you can upload uh, as an eBook. And then, and then your readers have the option to purchase your eBooks anywhere from 99 cents to $1.99 to $2.99. So there's a lot of different options that you have uh, just from that one book, print on demand, standard printing, and eBooks. And the other one I didn't even mention here, but audiobooks as well is, is, a, is a really, really good source. All right, phase two. That was phase one. Now phase two is the execution phase. Uh, in other words, this is where you're writing. Uh, you're now beyond the strategy and the pre-planning and you're actually writing your book now. And so there's four questions that you need to ask yourself, not just as a self-published author, but even, even the bigger name authors that are under contract, they have to ask these questions of themselves and of their publishers. So number one is, is what is your book about? You have to be very, very clear in terms of how does it benefit the reader? Number two, who's going to buy your book? Uh, in other words, who is your target audience? It's very important to understand your target audience because 
there is no one book for everybody. Um, my, my book series, again, I've been at it for 17 years. Um, there, there's no way that I can reach everybody. But the audience that I have reached uh, have told me on a consistent basis that they've been blessed and that they've learned a lot. And a lot of them come back to me asking me for advice because a lot of them are now authors. When they first purchased the book five, 10 years ago, they were not, but now they are. Number three, how will your book be different? Because there are so many new titles and so many reprints that come out every year. So how will your book be different? And then number four, how will you promote your book? And it goes back to the opening slide. What paths will you pursue to let others know about your work? So this is the phase two approach. All authors have to ask themselves these questions and be prepared to answer them as well. Now, we also need to, you, you need to know your markets. So there's a consumer market, there's a trade market, there's a retail market, and there's also a wholesale market. So the consumer market reaches those consumers that ultimately will purchase your book. And it's important that you know that because there are different magazines and periodicals and newspapers out there that specifically target the consumer. And the consumers are the ones that will purchase your books. So if you know these markets, and if you can get information about your books in these magazines and newspapers and periodicals, then that's one way to reach your reader. Uh, the second market is the trade market. So we have a number of magazines and publications and periodicals that focus on the trade. Um, one of the bigger ones is Publishers Weekly. Publishers Weekly also has a religious edition where you and I can learn almost every week or at least every other week by email subscription what's going on in the publishing world. And they send out a lot of information. And I subscribe, I've been subscribing for about 14 years. And I also subscribe specifically to the religious edition because I want to know what's going on in the area of religious books and what publishers are, are doing what in the marketplace, which publishing executives are moving on or maybe have retired. Uh, which, which publishing houses have gone out of business, which ones have been um, sold and bought by another publisher. All of this good information is coming out so you'll know what's going on in the publishing industry. The third area is retail. So these are very specific to bookstores, including Amazon.com. Understanding that market, what's going on with the bookstores. So one of, one of the more popular bookstores here in the United States of America for a number of years and were very, very author friendly was Borders Books. But unfortunately, about five years ago, because of a senior leadership strategy that went awry, Border Books is no longer in business. So we have to stay on top of what's going on. And then also, even with Amazon.com, they're, they're constantly making changes and updates and revisions and modifications on how they work with authors. So it's very important that we understand that. And then last but not least is the wholesale market. And this is where our distributors come into play. So we have a number of different distributors that are able to distribute your books uh, into the different bookstores all around the world. And there is no one distributor that does it all, but different distributors have different relationships and different channels to get your books into different stores and into the hands of the readers that ultimately will buy your book. So this is very important that we all know the four markets. Now, the, the, the example that I just gave you briefly, this is an older slide, but it's an older slide on purpose. I, I first created this slide about maybe 10 years ago uh, to show the trend on how these bookstores come and go how they open and close, some are acquired and some go out of business. So you'll see that I have an X next to Borders Bookstore and I have an X next to Walden Books and an X next to B. Dalton. Now here in the United States of America, these were very, very popular uh, and well-to-do bookstores at one time, but now they're out of business. And as a self-published author, it's important that we follow these trends so we'll know which bookstores to reach out to 
and, and which ones not to reach out to. Um, and under the Christian, uh, Cokesbury, uh, Logos, and Heaven and Earth have, have significantly diminished their presence. Um, and also family Christian bookstores uh, has recently closed as well. So some of the other bookstores are still operational. But the, the, the lesson here for this particular slide is to really go back again to slide number one and remember that there are so many different venues that we can use to get our books sold beyond just the bookstore. All right, this is the last phase, phase number three, and then pretty soon we can open it up for questions for you. Phase three is how you manage the process. So phase one started us out, phase two is the actual writing, and then phase three is the management of the entire process. So this includes your marketing, your promotions, your sales, and your publicity. So first point is this, network, network, network. Uh, you have to get to know people in the industry, other authors, be supportive, be an advocate for them, get yourself a coach and a mentor, get to meet the people in the publishing industry by going to different events. They get to know you, you get to know them. Um, the reason that I'm actually teaching this webinar today is through the relationships that I have gained through Media Associates International. Uh, my plan was to be in Singapore for the International uh, Christian Publishing Conference that they had back in October. I was not actually able to attend because other events came up on my calendar and I had to stay here. But it was through my relationship with a well-known, very professional, and really, really good guy, uh, a literary agent that I met at another writers' conference here in the United States of America that actually referred me, and that's how I met Ramon, and that's how I met the other members of the Media Associates International. Even though I didn't make the conference in Singapore, it's almost as if I were there. So network, network, network is very key. Get to know people and have them to get to know you and to present yourself as an outstanding person and a wonderful author. Also social media, Facebook, LinkedIn, constant contact for email or Aweber. They're, they're both pretty effective. I, I've used constant contact for about 15 years. Instagram, Pinterest, and, and YouTube because videos are becoming even more popular than they were five years ago. Uh, make sure that you have a website. Your website is your electronic brochure. Everything that people need to know about you and your book and your writing ministry should be there on your website, including your own bookstore. Make, make your books available to your buyers from your website. Uh, you can create a blog. Uh, if you were to go to, to my website, kevinwaynejohnson.com, I have my own blog. Every Wednesday, like clockwork, every Wednesday, um, I write a blog. It's called The Wednesday Word. And it's very important that I continue to engage my audience around the world on a regular basis. And it's just a different message every week that goes out. I send it out on Wednesday because Wednesday is the middle of the week. And oftentimes in the middle of the week, people need encouragement. And then press releases. Again, um, if I have a book coming out next September, now's the time to start to send out the press releases to let people know and give them awareness that the new book will be coming out. This is an older slide, 2011, but it gives you a, a glimpse into the power of social media uh, overall, as well as the retailers. So the retailers that we work with use social media quite a bit. Uh, as I update this slide, I will definitely include Instagram and Pinterest, but just a few years ago when I developed this, uh, you can see clearly Facebook was number one and Facebook will probably continue to be number one for quite some time. But even as far back as five, six years ago, you see YouTube gaining a presence because videos are becoming more and more popular, both with retailers as well as the customers that we work with, as well as the authors. Now, information about your book travels through a network of potential buyers in two possible fashions. Number one is gonna be word of mouth, all right? So that's called endo 
genius, happens in a coordinated fashion, like word of mouth recommendations. When your book gets in the hands of people that really, really, really like your message and your writing style, and you as an author, they share the word. They get the word out for you. It doesn't cost you anything. Their word of mouth recommendations are powerful. Uh, the other way is exogenous, and these would be sources outside of the system that they affect. For example, billboards and newspaper articles. Now, this requires work and monetary investment, but you have these two different sources that are always working hand in hand, and the information about your book will travel through a network of potential buyers, both through your efforts, which are outside of the system that they affect, and through word of mouth when people actually purchase your book. Now, I would like to conclude this webinar with just giving you some references and resources that I have used over the years, which have been quite phenomenal for me. Uh, Sally Stewart and the Christian Writers Market Guide. Uh, Dan Pointer is a well-known name in terms of book marketing. Uh, the book marketing update com and my good friend John Krimer a thousand and one ways to market your book uh, I've been really reading and buying their books going back 10 15 years and they've been very very helpful for me in understanding the publishing industry better and understanding how to position my books to, to maximize sales not just in my country but throughout the world uh, John Krimer also has penned a book called Celebrate Today. Depending on the message of your book, uh, it can coordinate with a particular holiday or a particular week. Uh, just about every day in the calendar year represents something significant. There's something significant going on. And if you can tie the message of your book into the significance of that day or that week or that month, it gets people's attention. Okay? Now, at the very bottom, the Christian booktailer, Booksellers, now called Retail Association, uh, is undergoing some changes. This is a very, very large Christian uh, retail association. They have a really, really big event here in the United States uh, that we host every year. We have countries from all over the world that come to the USA for this annual event. It's usually in the month of June. Uh, it's been in Chicago, it's been in Los Angeles, it's been in Washington, D.C. Uh, most recently, it was in Cincinnati, Ohio, it's been in Orlando, Florida. Uh, Christian retailers from all over the world come together, and different authors and, and bookstore owners come together from all over the world for workshops, for book signings, uh, for networking, getting to know each other, and to hear what's going on in the Christian publishing industry. It's a really, really great event, and it happens every year. Uh, I used to go on a regular basis. I haven't been there in a couple of years, but it's a really, really good event that I would definitely recommend. Now, make sure that as you participate in the different events that you leave behind a thank you note that's handwritten. Always plan in advance. Uh, if you appear on TV or radio, ask for a taped recording that you can use to market. Always offer to appear again. Uh, add them to your mailing list and then ask them if you can use them as a reference. So my dear friends from all over the globe, thank you so much for your attention. And at this time, we will open up for questions and answers. Thank you so much, Pastor Kevin. Those are really very helpful pointers and tips and advice. We would like to ask our participants uh, to type in their questions. I really like your um, reminder to uh, put the word out as early as seven to eight months before the publication of your of your book. That's really yeah. That's really helpful. And um, some people wait until the book is printed before <laughs> they, they go out and promote. Yeah. 
Uh, Jan yes. Wessel is asking, can you give some guidelines on pricing your book? Yes. Uh, I, I always price my book to be very competitive and uh, because I want it to be affordable to all of my readers. So generally speaking, um, depending on the number of pages of your book, if your book is about 200 pages from beginning to end, um, the price point would be probably about $20. If, you're, if, you're, if your book is, that, that's paperback. Uh, if, it's, if it's hardback, I would add an additional $5 to that. Uh, if your book is upwards to about 250 pages to 350 pages, uh, my price point would be around $25 for paperback and no more than $30 for hardback. The idea here behind that strategy is to make my books, as a self-published author, affordable for my readers. Because as a self-published author, we sell a lot of books through our, our speaking events and um, not necessarily through the bookstore chain. And we, we don't want to have a person to come up to our table after a speaking event and ask us for the price of the book. And, and we tell them that it's $35 or $40 because that, that kind of prices them out. So make, make your books competitive in price, but also affordable. Because uh, in other countries, maybe 20 or $25 could be expensive. So what is affordable in your country at the same time uh, being able to cover all of your costs? Uh, George um, is asking um, on book covers slide, I noticed most of the websites supplied are in the US and applied to people within the US. Do you know websites uh, non, for non-US uh, people? Can I use these websites as a non-US citizen? Will I be obliged to send them copies of my book? So yes. uh, copyright, the registration, those are US websites. So George is asking, coming from the international other country, can he register? in these websites? Um, what, so instead of me answering yes, what I would recommend is do, do some research for your country to see if there's an extension of that registration process specific to your country, because there, there probably is. And, and once you search that on the, on the web, uh, they should give you the information to that. So I would recommend, depending on what country that you're in, uh, go, go to your website and um, do a search to see if there's a, a local extension of an organization that offers the ISBN and the copyright for your country. If not, then you can reach out to the websites that I've given you uh, for the USA and, and you can ask one of the representatives there and they'll be able to direct you. Thank you, Pastor Kevin. Belia is asking, uh, so, as you promote uh, your book in the, for release in the fall, what stage of writing are you in at this time? Are you just beginning to write the book? Well, by the, time, by the time you want to start to get the word out to the local community that your book will be released, you want to start to get the word out as you're writing the book. So that would as be you're writing the book. in phase two. Okay. Because, because as you're writing the book, you'll, you'll start to get a feel for when you'll finish the book. And ideally, you want to start to get the word out to the community and to the different markets uh, six, seven, eight months ahead of time. So as you start writing, you'll know about the time that you're done. For example, I've, I've already written the first three chapters of my book. So okay. I, have six, I have six more chapters to go. Um, and, and I know that I'll be done probably during the summertime, and, uh, but it'll be actually released to the marketplace in September. So I know that because I've already started to write. Belly has another question. Um, if you have given your book to a publisher, are you still allowed to be a self-publisher? 
Uh, as long as they understand that uh, if, if they're not going to publish the book, then you can go ahead and, and self-publish. But make sure that the publisher and you have an understanding that they, will, they either will or they will not publish the book. If they will publish the book, then there's no need for you to self-publish. But if they will not publish the book, then you can go ahead and, and self-publish. Just make sure that when you self-publish, it's under your copyright and under your ISBN. Mercy, um, Mutani Mercy is asking, do you think self-publishing will continue to rise? Oh yeah, or, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. With, with the advent of social media and all of the unique and, and wonderful strategies that we can use to interact with our readers around the world through the internet, uh, is a, yeah, we, we, many of us, actually sell more books than the authors who have signed contracts with traditional publishers. That's been proven over and over again. So there's, no, there's absolutely no limit. If you're comfortable with all of the work that goes into it, because it, it requires more work, uh, then yeah, absolutely. But remember all the revenue from the book sales come back to you. So it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, it can be very lucrative. Okay. Thank you. Lisa Anderson Umania has several questions. Uh, she did a PhD dissert dissertation research on how to form leaders in Latin America. And so I'm wondering if I should write a book in Spanish or English. Uh, yes, by all means. You, you definitely want to meet the need of your audience. And if the majority of your audience speaks that language, then yes, write, write your book initially to that audience. And then over time, um, as it grows in sales, you can always have it translated into other languages at any given time. So mm -hmm. some, of my, some of my books are available in eight languages, uh, but my principal language is English, but uh, I have a great relationship with uh, men and women in Kenya, Africa. So a couple of my books are available in Swahili, um, Hungarian, Georgian, uh, Burmese. Um, it, it, it goes on and on. So write initially to your audience, and then over time, there's a possibility that some of those books can be translated into other languages. OK. Uh, what are your thoughts about uh, uh, transforming PhD uh, work into popular books it, it the the demand will drive that uh, depending on the feedback that you receive and uh, the demand from the marketplace would would determine whether or not that would be a good thing to do if, if you if you determine that there are a number of readers out there that would like to purchase that then yes by all means re reach reach those readers yes yeah dissertation those, those are dissertation work into a book you need to popularize yeah. and put you know the level to the to the readers yes uh okay so uh belia said so we cannot do self-publishing and also give it to a publisher i think you already mentioned this that if the publisher is not going to publish it then you can go ahead and self-publish so Correct. ask uh, for a definite answer from the publishing house first yeah if you give it to the publishing house Correct. Or, or if you're fortunate enough to have a literary agent to represent you, you can, mm -hmm. you can have, have that person negotiate the terms and conditions for you. Okay. John uh, Wessels is asking, do you get assistance in marketing your book? Do you employ someone? Uh, perhaps uh, it a commission? Yeah, it depends. So when I hire someone to do anything for me, um, the first thing I do is I, I take a look at their references. Number two, I take a look at, at what they charge. Number three, I take a look at the, the scope of work, whether they're just working, are they working in my country or are they working on a global scale? Because I'm at a place now in my writing where I'm interested in, in reaching people around the globe. Uh, and, and then number, number four is do they have a proven track record? If the answer is yes in those areas, I always prefer to hire someone who's the expert in that area so I can free up my time to do other things. Uh, the challenge that we have, though, as writers, whether you're 
just getting started or even if you're a seasoned writer and you've been at it for a long time, um, pe people tend to charge a lot of money for their expertise. And the question becomes for you as a self-published author, are, are they affordable? Uh, oftentimes they're not, they're just simply not affordable and you end up doing it on your own. If you're fortunate enough to find someone who is affordable and who's really, really good and they have good references, by all means, I recommend that you hire them so that you can free up your time to do other things. Uh, Belly has a follow-up question. Can the publisher have rights for a few years and then you can do self-publishing after that? Uh, I've, I've, heard, I've heard of stories, it's, it's possible, but you know, once a publisher you know, has the rights to your book, depending on what's in the contract, the terms and conditions in the contract, it could be for, it could be for perpetuity, so it, it could be forever. Uh, that's where a good literary agent comes in to kind of help you out. Uh, but they, they typically, if you sign a publishing contract, you know, unless that company goes out of business and nobody else purchases it and the contract becomes null and void, you have, you have to live by the terms and conditions in that contract. So you can stipulate, say, the contract will be good for five years and then review or if, good if for they, 10 years. If, if they allow you to do that. I'm not sure okay. if they would allow you to do that, but you would mm -hmm. have to rely on the negotiation expertise of a literary agent to represent you in that regard. Mm -hmm. And in other countries, uh, literary agents uh, do not exist or you, I mean, they're not around us in the US. It's, it's the SOP now to go through uh, literary agents, but in other countries, you have to do it yourself. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, that's, that, 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 could be, that could be good and, and it can be bad. So the, the good news is being able to approach a publisher on your own uh, gives you the opportunity to get to meet them and they get to meet you and you can sit down and have a conversation. The bad news is um, they, they probably know a little bit more about their contract than you ever would. So you just have to maybe have to go out and maybe hire a lawyer or an attorney to read it just to make sure that you're protected. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that advice. Okay, so do we have any more questions from our audience? We are so grateful, Pastor Kevin, for your time. Thank you. And we are so uh, thankful that you're able to share uh, a lot of very helpful advice. So this is our, this is our your contact information, your website, your email. Yes. Okay, people can, can follow up and, and uh, ask you some questions. Is that Absolute, okay? Absolutely, I love, I love to be uh, a resource to, to help people out. I've, I've been doing it for as long as I've been writing for 17 years and people, people come to me all the time to ask for different pieces of advice. So I'm more than happy to help. Thank you so much, Pastor Kevin. Thank you. Okay, so our time is up and we are, are grateful that uh, you have joined us and we hope you can join us again next month or next yes. year, January. Yes. Just, the MAI webinar. Hey, Ram uh, Ramon, just, yep, just call upon me anytime. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you everyone from around the world, our friends and contacts. God bless you all and have a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Merry Christmas, thank you. Bye for now. Bye-bye.